Today, we're using the famous Mike's Hot Honey to make a pineapple and hot honey mead. Let's get started. So I'm sure many of you have walked through your local grocery store and discovered the Mike's Hot Honey. This is a chili infused honey that's amazing on lots of different kinds of food, including ice cream. I think most everyone who's seen it in the store has asked the question, can it be made into a mead? Well, if you've had that thought, this video is especially for you, and it's also for all the wonderful people on the Mead Facebook group, where people ask this question almost every day. So I hope that this video will make it to those people. We are taking this hot honey and combining it with a bunch of pineapple juice. Here's our recipe card for this mead. While this recipe card is specific to pineapples, you can sub out any fruit or no fruit at all if you wanna make this. We started by buying about three quarter gallon of pineapple juice and two pounds of Mike's Hot Honey. I don't think we're gonna back sweeten with more Mike's Hot Honey, so we're planning to use it all in the primary. We started this mead by pouring in our pineapple juice and hot honey into a container. We mixed up our mead with a wine drill attachment and pitched our yeast. We're using the Lavin QA23 because it's a great yeast for tropical fruited meads and often it ferments very efficiently. Our starting gravity for this brew was 1.084. If this ferments completely out, we're looking at 11% brew. I was worried that this wouldn't ferment at all because of the vinegar that's found in the hot honey itself. However, what I found through fermenting it is that the vinegar content isn't quite enough to damage the brew or keep it from fermenting. Because we're making mead, we want to be very specific to add yeast nutrient to this brew. We added our yeast nutrient, which was Fermaid O, at the 24 hour mark. You can also do a staggered nutrient schedule or front load your nutrients. Regardless, add nutrients to your mead. After we added our yeast nutrient to the brew, we went ahead and let it continue to ferment. The fermentation time was about two weeks, and then we saw a bunch of the sediment and various things fall to the bottom. This brew was actually starting to clear up quite a bit, to my surprise. We took another gravity reading and found that our gravity after fermentation was 1.000, which means our brew was about 11% ABV. This brew was really spicy and very dry, so we needed to back sweeten it. We went ahead and stabilized it with potassium sorbate and potassium metabisulfite so we could halt any future fermentation. You have an option of pasteurizing if you'd prefer not to use those things. Either way, I think this brew really needed some sweetness from honey to save it, so we made sure to stabilize it. After waiting about 24 hours, after stabilizing, we went ahead and back sweetened with six ounces of orange blossom honey. This brought our final gravity up to about 1.020. We let this brew sit for a few weeks to really clear up, ensure that there's no further fermentation, and then we went ahead and bottled it. So here's a timeline of what your mead might look like Roughly, keep in mind that yeast can kind of do what they want, so your fermentation time might be longer or shorter. Regardless, here's your timeline. It's time for us to taste test this and see how Mike's Hot Honey does in a mead. BC, have you ever used Mike's Hot Honey on anything? Maybe on pizza. Okay, have you ever had, haven't had an ice cream before? That's no. something, it's interesting. I had it on ice cream. Very interesting. No, I mean, I've, hot honey is very popular right now. People are losing their minds, especially on Facebook. It's so a, it, almost every restaurant, like any like modern cuisine restaurant, like right. fusion restaurants, will have generally hot honey available mm -hmm. as like one of their condiments now. Right. Which is the thing five, six years ago you would never have seen. It's true. And yeah, it's a, it's a fave for me for pizza and McDonald's chicken nuggets. And maybe mead today because this is a, a pineapple juice, hundred percent juice, hot honey. I should the, have brought some some McNuggets with me. Yeah, we could have done a pairing episode. Wait, <laughs> <laughs> I have a twenty piece right here. All right, so um, so tell me about this mead. Two pounds of hot uh, Mike's hot honey, all about uh, it was about a gallon of pineapple juice just from okay. cans. Ferment out ten eighty ish starter starting gravity, uh, final gravity. Leveled out, back sweetened with orange blossom honey to 1120-ish, okay. somewhere in that realm, I think. The pineapple character is nice. Mm -hmm. Is it uh, canned pineapple juice? Yeah, it's the dull. Nice. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. I, I've made stuff with that. It I'm, I'm well. about to do it again, probably without hot honey, because I okay. want to see what that happens without the, the hot honey. It really adds some stuff to this thing. Yeah, I might get some. I'm, I'm planning on going down to the chef store this weekend. and. Picking up a few things and you. Let can, me know how much can, it is. You can buy it like by the case in those big, Ooh. big cans. Yeah, you gotta let me know how much that is. I, I might uh, <laughs> partake. The 
You get Ooh. you get a little bit of the heat in there. The yeah. pineapple character is nice. Like there's nothing that I'm feeling like. And it looks good. I mean, nervous it, about with this. That honey's not that hot, right? No, but this just hits in a weird way, in my opinion. Alcohol and capsaicin always do weird things together. I'll give yeah. you that. Like, right. I don't like a spicy margarita. Oh, because it just—it's like it becomes yeah. too much. You I don't know? mind them. This is just—they uh, have the extra hot honey too. I don't know if you knew that. You oh seen well. That? Like so next year, super hot honey. <laughs> Whatever. All right, I'm going for it. It does spread all over, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's all in my throat right now. Uh, it's. I had to remind myself that it's pineapple because my first uh -huh. critique was this is acidic. And then, <laughs> You're like, wait a minute. Oh, wait, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's appropriate. <laughs> it should be. Uh, I'm not picking up too much of the honey character. I think because as it's on its decrescendo, right. <laughs> the heat is doing the Yeah, same they're thing. not. It's, it's distracting. <laughs> that that uh, capsaicin is quite distracting. It does have like a, a little bit of that warm, like pineapple y mm -hmm. world. It's not the sharp, acidic, totally pineapple that I get sometimes. It's more of the warm realm. Yeah, and it's got that like sweet, you know those like pineapples that are packed in juice that oh, you yeah. look at? It's got that sweet, a little bit cooked pineapple y kind of mm -hmm. flavor, uh, which is like, it's really ringing those like nostalgia bells for me, you know? <laughs> Takes you back to childhood. <laughs> I'm glad this could take you back for Drinking a second. Your, your juice Little box. Little baby, uh, baby most with his... Uh, <laughs> Mike's hot honey <laughs> Man, my kid is a juice box kid right now. Mm. And it is so annoying. Because it's like, give it to him. Uh -huh. just sitting in the back seat. And then you hear... And I look in the rear view and she's just spraying oh, no. it all over the back seat. Yeah. Don't, don't do juice boxes. Don't do juice... You hear that? <laughs> you heard that here... <laughs> I don't uh, think this is bad. I do wonder what time will do with the heat of this hot honey. This is pretty young. This is within two months. What ABV was this? Ten and a half. Yeah, I you know I almost want it to be thicker. I want mm. it to be kind of syrupy. Yeah. So maybe glycerin or maltodextrin or something to, because I don't think I want it to be sweeter. Right. And so some additive, but I almost want it to feel a little bit like a sack mm. mead where you would, you know, you would pour yeah. like a cordial like this. Yeah, you're not, there's no way you're killing this whole bottle. Uh -uh. That's. But if it was a little bit thicker. Yeah. A little, you know, one of these where mm. you sip at it for a little while could be kind of nice. Uh, you know, I was telling you before we tasted this, I was concerned about ethyl acetate. Oh yeah. Which yeah. you can just read about here on the screen. A pause. But it, it is a thing that can happen with vinegar in the presence of alcohol. And I don't taste any of that fingernail polish, yeah. acetone, I, or any of that. I kind of wonder, people always talk about that. It's like, is this going to have problems fermenting, blah, blah, blah. I had no problems with fermentation. Mm -hmm. um, now, you also noted that could produce or be present later on. Yeah, it could, take, it could take time for that chemical reaction to happen. Basically, what happens is the acetic acid in the presence of ethanol combines to create mm. a new compound called ethyl acetate. And that's part of the reason you can't use vinegar commercially mm. when selling meads or wines. Uh, but it's a, you know, like any reaction like that, it takes, it's organic. It takes place over time. And so. Drink you know, it before you, the year. <laughs> yeah, you, you may notice it more two years from now than right. right now, but I don't pick up anything like that now. And honestly, it drinks kind of nice. So for all the Facebook people on there who've asked me this question, I hope that somebody shared this video to answer your question because I haven't seen nine many, out of ten. I haven't seen many people do this with hot honey, so I'm sure there's a bunch of people who will do it, but that's yeah. it. Yeah, works for me. Go check out doing the most. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>